Hi, my name's Luke, welcome back to Photobuy, and today we're looking at the Nikon ZFC. Is it any good? What's the difference between the Z50? Let's find out. So many years ago, back in 2014, Nikon came out with the Nikon DF, which was a retrograde style camera, similar base to the D800. So they took the guts out of that, put it in a retro camera, and then handed it to the hipsters. And seven years later, this has now been brought out. This is the Nikon ZFC. It has the guts of the Z50 shoved into what is actually a really good looking body. In terms of its features, you're still looking at a 20 megapixel sensor. It's got a 11 frames per second, it can shoot 4K video up to 30 frames a second, and it can do 1080 at 120. So pretty much the same sort of bits that you saw with the Z50, but in, I would say a much better looking uh, style. Now I will say that as much as it does look very metallic, the only piece of metal that we can feel is actually this top plate here. The under bit is plastic. Everything around here is plastic. The silver ring on the lens, plastic. So yes, it does look very good and it does appeal to more of the masses. And certainly going from the DF, which is a full frame, to a crop sensor, which is what's in the ZFC, appeals to more people. If you don't want to go to Fuji, but you want to be able to use your current lenses because you own a Nikon, you can buy the adapter and then you can use it on your ZFC. So really it is more of a comparison between the Z50 and the ZFC. And quite frankly, it kind of comes down to one styling and ergonomics and also budget. See, when you have a look at the ZFC, because it is a slightly newer camera, you are paying a bit more of a premium, as well as the fact that you've got some retro styling. So on average, you'd be sp spending about 900 pounds on the Nikon Z50 and just over 1,000 to 1,100 on the Nikon ZFC. So you're paying a bit of a difference, a bit of a premium, if you will, for a camera that is by far less ergonomic. One of the things we loved about the Z50 was the lovely ergonomic grip that made it very easy to hold. And then when you go over to a very small retro camera, it becomes a little harder to hold. The placement of the thumb, you kind of have to position it between the dial and the buttons without touching anything and you kind of got to squeeze it really tight in order to hold it safely, especially if you want to use it just quickly one-handed. But apart from that, it's a nice and simple camera to use. If you're from a Fuji world like I am, you're used to the dials on the top, albeit they do have some very different changes, but I will get to those in a moment. Uh, you're still running on the same sort of viewfinder you do out of a ZFC, so nothing's changed there. The lenses themselves, only the 28 f2.8 has actually been designed to replicate the similar style lenses that we saw from the early days at Nikon, where you have this lovely plastic grip here. Makes it very easy to move, although do be warned that it is actually focused by wire. So there's no actual gear system inside. It's all running via the wire system. So as well as keeping to retro, they're still giving you some modern treatment being that you still have a screen that flips out, which is very nice and very easy to use. Only 0.2 inches smaller than the Z50, so it's not a massive jump or a massive gap. In fact, most people may not even notice it. You don't have any um, side points where you'd insert a SD card. That's actually in the bottom where the battery is placed. And then on the side, you've got three different ports. You've got HDMI, you've got USB charging, and you have a mic input. So no headphone, but there is a mic input. So if you wanted to get some really good looking video out of this camera, you can. The 4K, really good, 1080p is lovely. But if you are using 4K, use it in 24, 25, and 30, and you'll get some really good results. So as well as giving you a mostly analog style, you'll, you still get one very small screen that allows you to see your aperture, which is kind of strange because with most retro style cameras, you either just don't have that and you just use the screen or you would actually have it on the lens itself. Now, Nikon have opted not to add a focus ring, which is a bit of a disappointment because I think it would have really made the 28mm look its look the part and what they've given you is just an aesthetically pleasing silver ring that does nothing it is quite literally fixed the only bit that moves is the front which is the focus if they switch the silver ring to an aperture i would be a little bit more pleased and it'd be a lot easier to actually use the lens because i've got to remind myself that's focus and then that's aperture which is the dial you can change 
the focus to aperture, but then you've got to be careful about having to knock it because you can't actually hold it in place. It constantly moves. So in terms of lenses, the Nikon ZFC comes in two kits. You have the ZFC with the 28 f2.8, which is definitely my favorite kit, albeit that it is a bit more at just over 1,100 pounds. And then for just over 1,000, about 1,040, depending where you look, you have the Nikon with the 16 to 50. Now, I was kind of hoping that they would add a bit more of a retro style to this lens, but they haven't. They've basically taken the lens from the Z50, painted it silver and called it a day. So it's a little bit disappointing to see that they're going to a degree to make something retro and then just cutting corners when they can really show what they can do and how they can really make a modern camera feel and look like its retro ancestors. So until that happens, I think most people will be going with the Z50. I don't see Nikon planning on expanding the analog range, although we could be very wrong, and uh, we'll have to wait and see. So if you're looking for a camera with a retro style and you want to be able to show off to your friends what you've got, the Nikon ZFC will certainly tick the box. But if you're after something that can function and work well as a camera, and you don't want to be spending the extra 200, 300 pounds, then have a look at the Z50 because you won't be disappointed. And overall, that's our review of the Nikon ZFC. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, my name is Luke, this is Photobyte, and we'll see you next time. ZFC, the fancy camera, I think is what they're gonna call it.